Welcome back, people of everywhere, for another session of R&R. &R. And while I was on a roll, I got delayed by life. But now I am back to hopefully continue my way through the Friday the 13th franchise. Which one are we on this time? Number four? Well, let's take a look at Friday the 13th, part four, the final chapter. Even though it is not the final chapter, because there are eight more Jason movies after this. So in part four, we follow the Jarvis family, which is a mother, a teenage daughter, and a young son, played by a young Corey Feldman. And at the same time, there is a group of teenagers that moved across the street. And there is also a man walking around in the woods in search of something. Yeah, there's a lot going on in this movie. The events in this movie take place almost right after the events of the last movie, starting off with the ambulance picking up the supposedly dead Jason. So right from the get-go, I'm going to tell you that of the original quadrilogy of movies, this one is my favorite. So with that information, will you stop it? Turtles, man. So with that information, I'm going to start off with what I disliked because it's actually a shorter list. First off, the teenage aspect of this movie, while does fit in with what they've been doing for the entire series, really just kind of seems tacked on to fill out the runtime. And with the group of teenagers being so big, I kind of forget which one is which. Some of them seem very interchangeable, especially with the fact that Two of them are twin sisters. And there's also the aspect of the man walking around in the woods. He's in search of Jason because he killed this man's sister. And he really doesn't do anything in the movie except add on runtime. And his kill in this movie is hilarious. I'm serious, when Jason is stabbing him to death, the guy is, <laughs> the guy is sitting there going, Ah! He's killing me! Ah! He's killing me! Ah! I read somewhere that the test audiences for this movie laughed whenever he died. That's not good. As for things I didn't like, that's really it. I think this movie has some of the best acting so far in the franchise. And two of the best performances come from little Corey Feldman and one of the teenagers played by Crispin Glover. I love that man. Seriously, how can anybody not love Crispin Glover? He's so weirdly eccentric. It is basically a law that you have to love him. For anybody who does not know who Crispin Glover is, he plays Marty McFly's dad in the first Back to the Future. This, this scene where all the teenagers are in the living room and they're dancing and, and Crispin Glover just starts... <laughs> oh, I gotta get through this review. And as far as Corey Feldman goes, he actually gives a really good child performance. Some people could say that some of the aspects of his character are just pointless, such as the fact that he makes these prosthetic masks that actually look like the props department of the movie just wanted to show off so they filled a bedroom full of masks. But I think little touches here and there actually add a lot to his character, like the masks or the fact that his sister asks him to fix the car when something goes wrong or to fix the lights when they go off. It shows that this kid is really smart and really knows how to handle problem solving, which comes into play when he's the one that beats Jason. But that doesn't mean he doesn't also have some really funny parts. Like when he's lying in bed and he can see into the other house and sees one of the girls changing. He's just like, oh no, I shouldn't look at this. 
but boobies. <laughs> now, while all of the characters might not have character development exactly, there is good enough writing between the characters and chemistry on screen and performances given that you do latch on to some of these characters, even if some of the other ones you are left wanting like a couple of the teenagers that I really wasn't caring about right before they died they did have a bit of a touching moment so when one of them died I actually ended up caring now one last thing is that this movie has some great kills you know how I kept rambling about Crispin Glover yeah, he has the best death in this whole movie, too. He gets stabbed in the hand with a corkscrew and then takes a meat cleaver straight to the face. It made my little sister that I was watching it with just be like, no, mm -mm, no. Yeah, I, I was watching this movie with my 12-year-old sister. Big brother of the year right here. And another chick just gets thrown out the window and lands on the car and blows out all the windows. It's so over the top, which is why it's so good. There is probably, though, the most disappointing kill of the entire franchise in this movie. And that is the Jarvis mother. It is the most disappointing because you don't see it happen. At all. You don't even see her body. She just walks outside gasps, and then it cuts to the next scene. Woo. But all in all, guys, with how much I love these characters, with some of the really actually good performances given, and not just good for a slasher movie, but just good, some very fine writing, and some very good kills, I'm going to give Friday the 13th Part 4 the final chapter an A. Even though I said it's my favorite of the quadrilogy, I'm giving it the same score as the original movie because there is no way in hell I'm giving it an A+. Plus. That's for special things, man. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe so that I can see you next time on more R&R. &R, where I can hopefully make it through all of these movies before October is over. Wish me luck.